and welcome to May Makers with Heart Mystery Envelope. This is Amanda with Crafting with Amanda. And I think the mystery envelope is one of my favorites because we all get sent the same pieces and create something with it. I am also participating in the May I Scrap Lift You and I am scrap lifting this layout by our own Maker with Heart, Jessica. She's with the Paper Heart, so her link will be below. And this is from a Galentine Day video um, hop that she did back in February. Now these are the pieces that everybody was sent this month from Dawn and she asked us to create a mixed media background or a piece using paste, watercolor pearls, slimmer dress, shimmer brushes, gels, anything. You get the idea. And the papers that she sent were all four by three pieces from the Hello Darling collection. Now I've been working on photos from a big collection for our house in California and I just didn't feel like the colors in Hello Darling were right for that. So I went and found these photos of my grand niece when she was a baby and I pulled those because the colors worked so perfectly with the sage color in this collection. And then the two stencils that you see are actually part of a 12 by 12 stencil that comes in the Dream Maker collection. So if you want that, that's a limited time. I think through the end of June you can get that. And then I am also using the Hello Darling scrapbooking stamp and the background element stamp I pulled out. I don't actually think I end up using that one. So she, Dawn told us that we could use extra pieces of the pattern paper if we wanted. We could do cardstock of any sizes. So really there was no limitations as far as I was concerned. It was just a matter of um, creating a layout with the Hello Darling as our inspiration colors and then mixed media. And I love mixed media. I keep telling myself I need to do more. So here's more of the pieces that I'm using and I have these letters and if you're a puzzle word solve person, maybe you can figure out what my title is going to be. Um, and I'm looking at Jessica's layout where she has besties and I'm deciding what color I want to do it in. And I do think I'm going to do it in the sapphire blue from the Hello Darling collection. And then I know that these pieces of paper, she did them, Jessica did them as triangles to make a square in the center. And I'm kind of just using um, the three by fours as they are to kind of make a offset square. And then just like Jessica did, I'm gonna go ahead and use the circle stencil, excuse me, words are hard to find for the background. And I, I believe this is in the Scarlet, which is another color from Hello Darlin, and kind of using my matted photos. Jessica had one photo. I have the three skinnier ones that I've kind of combined into one. And now, like I said, both of these stencils are from the Dream Maker collection stencil. And so the leaves, I just love. I think these are going to be something that I use in my future layouts, mixed media, or even just to have something. Um, as a shadow in the background. I'm absolutely loving these leaves. So using sage ink, I am coloring in the biggest leaf, kind of following Jessica had used stamps. I'm using the stencil. I don't need to have any gesso on the background of this because I'm not kind of using any kind of a liquid mixed media. I'm just using kind of layering um, ink on top of ink. And then I will add some textured paste that I've tinted. I did not purchase the Sage reinker at the time that I got the ink pads. It was one of those, oh, I'll do it next month, and then I probably forgot, and now they're still sold out. So I'm, I'm waiting for the Sage reinker to come back in stock. But what I end up doing, I'm just kind of telling you this in advance, is with my texture paste, I like to tint it or actually color it with the reinkers. And so I decided to use pine. It's not a color in the paper pack or a suggestion, but I knew that it has that rich gray tones and I think it would be a good balance to the deep scarlet and sapphire that are in the Hello Darling papers. So there I just mixed a little bit up on my multi-purpose mat. And then if you haven't done texture paste through stencils, the bigger the stencil opening, like these particular leaves are a little bigger, it's, it's like frosting a cake. You really do just have to put a glob down and then just kind of push it through the stencil and make it even. This particular tool is nice because the offset helps you keep that level. Like you can ride on the top of the plastic and then the paste goes right through to the underneath. 
Now I'm looking here and I'm thinking, oh no, am I going to have enough to finish this off? And I didn't want to mix anymore. And I realized last time that those bottom two leaves aren't shown when I put my picture down. So I stole some of the paste from that before it dried. And then here, sure enough, you can see all of that. And there's some splatters and kind of mishaps that happened when I dropped the stencil, but you're not going to see those by the time I'm done. And then I really, this is another part of that stencil from the Dream Maker kit. And I love this, I believe it's Moon Glitter Paste. Let me get the name of that for you. Okay, glad I looked that up. That is Nebula Glitter Gel. And it has stars in it, but because the opening on the stencil are tiny, the stars are not going to go through the stencil. So I'm making sure to collect all of those off the top of the stencil and put them back in my jar for my next project. And then Jessica used, I think, um, a black. She might have used the glit, gilt color. I am using the Midnight in the Dina Weekly sprays. And I just take the whole tube out and kind of splatter it on. And it gives you, depending upon how hard you splatter, it gives you big and little splatters. So while that is drying, because the, the Nebula glitter glue does take a minute to dry. I am going to prepare all the rest of the papers and the embellishments for here. So using my Misty, I am stamping some of these flowers from the Hello Darling scrapbooking kit. And then I will fussy cut those off screen with my scan and cut. And then I'll also cut some extra pieces so that I can lay those back in. And because I'm using the outline, it just lines up perfectly. I didn't even have to move my stamps. And I'm showing you this process or quick fast tracking you through it just so that you can kind of think of head. And the more you do things, the more you'll kind of get a feel for them. But I wanted to do those small solid stamps first in a different color. I did the scar um, candy apple. And then I'm doing the multi-layer of the flowers there's it's great it's like a three-step stamping there's a base color and then some outlines of petals and then the whole outline of the stamp and I started with the whole outline and I then I did the base color with second generation of the scarlet and now I'm going to go back over these using kind of those highlighted petal stamps this is kind of like the third generation but I'm going to do that with the candy apple kind of to give it a brightness that I think this layout needs. But again, I'm going to do it in second generation. And the nice thing I like about the Misty is I can do second generation, but I can do two layers of it. So it's not quite as bold as a first generation, but it's a little more intense than just a simple second generation. And as I was preparing my papers and looking back at Jessica's layout, I realized she had this great scripty kind of bracket at the top of her triangles that I was like, ah, oh, that's a perfect balance for this. So sure enough, I went back to my die cuts, my thin cuts, and got a bracket, a bracketed, I don't know what they would call it, like medallion there here in the red. And I will cut that in half and just add that up there. Again, it's so nice. I love scrap lifting because some of the decisions have already been made for you <laughs> and you just have to pay attention to the details. Or if you're more inspired you can just take off and go in a direction that works for you and works for your photos but Jessica I just I absolutely love this so I just let her kind of do some of the decisions and thinking for me I'm looking at her layout and not using the same exact tools I'll call it like the same stamps the same leaves or whatever but it's definitely I think you can see where I got inspiration and am following her lead on this I will place all these down and then off camera I will glue them down so there'll be a little bit of shift. It's one of those things that you kind of set them up where you want them and try things out and realize okay this works. I'm going to add some more here to the left side and I realized that I needed some a little bit of red over there to kind of draw your eye. So I'm grabbing one of the flowers but it just it felt like too much so kind of I don't remember who said it there was a famous fashion person that you know whatever's the last thing you put on take it off and, and then you're set to go so sure enough that last flower had to come off 
And just like Jessica has her journaling in the lower right corner, I am taking an old stamp of journaling jots and then I am masking the right side or edge of my layout so that the journaling doesn't go all the way off to the side. My final touch on this is just to distress all the rest of the edges. I didn't point it out, but I did stitch all of the pieces except for the bracket. Um, and I stitched the matting behind the photos and I stitched all of those individual rectangles from the Hello Darling paper. And I just, I love how this turned out. The Nebula glitter glue is fantastic. It just, it really shines. I, you know, obviously the photo doesn't do it justice. Here's a close up of what I did. I will have the links for all the other makers with heart and a playlist for our videos of what we did with the same papers that Dawn sent out in our inspiration or challenge of mixed media. All the supplies that I used will be listed below the description of this video as well as that playlist and link to all the other makers with heart. So be sure to send some love their way. Give us thumbs up. It really helps us out and doesn't cost you anything. Blessing.